boomerangs, bombs, dungeons, magic swords, puzzles, and green tunics. Welcome to The Legend of Zelda. Warning. When discussing the history of Hyrule, very little can be considered absolute. Nintendo has yet to release an actual timeline of the events that take place within each Zelda title and how they connect. The following segment is our theory of how each game fits into Nintendo's grand scheme, if there even is one. We're not saying that this is the absolute answer, but our findings will hopefully open up a few ideas about Hyrule's past you may have never thought of before. Hyrule was created by three goddesses, Din, Nehru, and Foror. Once they created the fantasy world, they left it. All that remained in their wake was the Triforce, and the void that was created in the spot where they crossed dimensions. This became known as the Sacred Realm, or Golden Land, to the inhabitants of Hyrule. All of this is told during a cutscene that plays partway through the Ocarina of Time. Several sages emerged out of the Hylian people. They constructed numerous temples, including the Temple of Time, and the Master Sword to protect the Triforce and the Sacred Realm. Before long, a war began amongst the races of Hyrule to find the Triforce, and it lasted for several ages. Eventually, the Minish grew sick of the never-ending conflict and created the Pickery Sword. This weapon was given to Gustav, a soldier garbed in green, who used it to stop the Long War. Gustav was dubbed King of Hyrule, and the Pickery Sword, or Four Sword, was placed in a pedestal. Every 100 years, a swordsmanship tournament would be held, and the winner would be permitted to touch the legendary blade. Most of this information was first revealed in the Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. A number of theories, including our own, consider Minish Cap to be the earliest game in the timeline. A couple of notions from the game itself support this. The opening speaks of the Pickery giving their sword to the hero of men, not the hero of time. This turns out to be Gustav, who wore a green tunic but no hat. Our Link at the beginning of the story wears green but is hatless as well. Ezlo, the malformed mage who catches a ride on Link's head throughout the adventure, crowns the lad with his own green cap once the wizard returns to his original form. Ezlo says it suits Link, and the emerald cap would go on to become a staple of the heroes of Hyrule. The second game, which is similarly placed throughout multiple fan-created backstories, is the Ocarina of Time. It seems to feature the first appearance of Ganondorf, as the King of Hyrule doesn't seem to know about his evil intentions. Ganondorf was busy searching for the entrance to the Sacred Realm so that he could wield the power of the Triforce and rule Hyrule. But after years of finding nothing, he decided to trick the King into helping him. Every other Zelda title except for Minish Cap and Majora's Mask has mentioned Ganon in some way, shape, or form. If these adventures are chronological, Ocarina would have to be second in line. In 1998, Miyamoto also stated that the Ocarina of Time is the first story. This was about six years before the Minish Cap was released. After Ocarina, however, things get a little foggy. Majora's Mask obviously follows it, but after that, we've seen a surprising amount of variation. Some ideas end with The Wind Waker, and some with the original 8-bit games. The one we found to be the most compelling, and confusing, is the split timeline theory. It begins to drastically shift the legend directly after Ocarina of Time. The theory argues that two different Hyrules were created at the end of that game. You defeat Ganon as adult Link, and speak with adult Zelda afterwards. She wishes for Link to have a childhood, so she uses the Ocarina to send him back to before they met. This becomes Hyrule A with Link and Zelda as children, before Ganon took over. Hyrule B is the world he left behind, where adult Zelda remained after Ganon had been defeated and Link had been deleted. Meanwhile, in the past, young Link and young Zelda inform the king of Ganon's evil plans. Link then leaves Hyrule before the war breaks out in search of Navi, who left him in the Temple of Time. This brings Link to Majora's Mask. After he saves Termina, Link attempts to return to Hyrule via the sea, but is shipwrecked, and begins the Game Boy Adventure, Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening is rumored to be a dream. As it comes to a close, Link regains consciousness in the ocean, and the island has mysteriously disappeared. At the end, he battles a nightmare creature that takes the shape of Ganon. This reveals to him his deepest fear, 
inevitable future, or both. Link made his way back to Hyrule to discover that Ganon had won the war. Stripped of his equipment after being shipwrecked, Link had to collect his armor and weapons and stop Ganon a second time. This began the original Legend of Zelda for the NES. In Link's absence, the citizens of Hyrule moved north, which explains why the early overworld map didn't have any towns or castles. Ganon had eventually uncovered the Triforce of Power, and Zelda received the Triforce of Wisdom. Fearing Ganon would take her piece of the ancient relic, Zelda broke it into eight pieces. Link eventually picked them all back up, destroyed Ganon, and became a hero once again. According to its manual, Zelda 2 takes place several seasons after Zelda 1. The sequel introduces Link to the actual Legend of Zelda, a tale many gamers have never heard before. A long time ago, the King of Hyrule's son learned about the Triforce and desired it greatly. An evil wizard informed the prince that his younger sister, Zelda, knew of its whereabouts. The two confronted Zelda, but when the princess refused to talk, the wizard forced her into a deep sleep. Overcome with power, the wizard died in the process, leaving the prince guilt-stricken over betraying his own blood. He had his sister move to the North Castle Altar and declared that every daughter born into the royal family shall be named Zelda. This event predates the Minish Cap, but occurs after the events of King Gustav. This clears up a bit of the confusion gamers feel when they keep encountering characters with the same name. Link learned all of this when he headed north to rediscover Hyrule in Zelda 2. The princess trapped in a deep sleep was none other than the original Zelda, placed there by her brother years before. Link hunted for the Triforce of Courage, prevented the return of Ganon, and pulled this original Princess Zelda from her eternal slumber. Soon after Zelda 2 is the Four Swords adventure, with either a new Link and Zelda, or the same duo that first met during the Ocarina of Time. It's clear the multiplayer journey takes place after the Minish Cap, because it begins with the villainous Vadi trapped within the Pickery Sword. But it definitely took place before A Link to the Past, because once he's revealed as Vadi's puppet master, Ganon acquires the Trident of Power, which he then uses on the Super Nintendo. A Link to the Past speaks of an evil that had been sealed away by the Sages, which would lead one to assume that the Super Nintendo quest takes place during Hyrule B, the timeline that began once the Sages had sealed the evil, and Zelda had been left behind in a world with a sealed Ganon and no Link one could also assume that young Link told the king of his adventure after he traveled back in time. This tale would have ended with Ganon being destroyed, and could have been passed down as a legend and not a historical account, despite Ganon eventually winning the war. In issue 165 of Nintendo Power, Eiji Onuma, who was the assistant director on Ocarina and directed Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Phantom Hourglass, said, If you think back to the end of Ocarina of Time, there were two endings in that game in different time periods. First, Link defeated Ganon as an adult, and then he actually went back to being a child. You could say that the Wind Waker takes place a hundred years after the ending in which Link was an adult. So the story that's retold at the beginning of Wind Waker explains what happened to Zelda and Hyrule after Link disappeared in time. Ganon found a way to escape his prison and still possessed the Triforce of Power. Zelda's descendant, Tetra, still carried the Triforce of Wisdom, but the new Link was forced to rediscover the Triforce of Courage. Let's take a broad look at the picture we're attempting to paint. Minish Cap first, Ocarina second, then the timeline splits. There's Hyrule A, with Link and Zelda as kids warning the king of Ganon's evil plans. And parallel to that, Hyrule B, with a sealed away Ganon, adult Zelda, and no Link. Hyrule A leads to Majora's Mask, Link's Awakening, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Four Swords, and then a Link to the Past. Hyrule B leads to Wind Waker. But we're missing two games, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. These titles lend themselves to this split timeline theory best of all. They were released on the same day and begin pretty much the same way. Link goes to check on the Triforce via different routes, however. The theory speculates that these games are taking place at the exact same time, just in two different Hyrules. Both games begin with the Triforce in its resting place. The previous games for both timelines have presumably reset the Triforce. Both ages and seasons deal with someone trying to resurrect Ganon. Does this solidify the split timeline theory? We're going to leave that up to you to decide. 
We're not sure which Game Boy Color adventure takes place in which timeline, but we've speculated that both games occur at the end of each, or at least the end of the story that's been told so far. That was fun, but we also have two brand new Zelda games coming out that could totally shatter this and all other theories. What we do know is that Phantom Hourglass takes place after Wind Waker. As long as the game doesn't resurrect Ganon or disturb the Triforce, it fits in this timeline with no problem and we can't wait to get our hands on it. The real question is, where does Twilight Princess fit? And will it connect any of these dots? <laughs> Apparently, it takes place between Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker, which would set it in Hyrule B. We have yet to play through the entire game, so plenty of questions still remain. It seems that a strange darkness is trying to consume Hyrule and Zelda. Could this darkness be trying to destroy the princess due to the split she caused by returning Link to his childhood? Or is it just Ganon trying to make his evil return? Will Hyrule ultimately be flooded in the end, giving birth to Wind Waker's Great Sea? The ending of Twilight Princess could dramatically disprove all of these ideas, but we were eager to collect them and assemble our theory of how Hyrule happened, especially after looking back at this groundbreaking franchise. Thanks for joining us in our six-part retrospective on The Legend of Zelda. We look forward to discussing and debating multiple timelines and dimensions as Nintendo continues one of the greatest fantasy adventures of all time. As long as there's a Triforce, there will be a Zelda. As long as there's a prosperous kingdom, there will be an evil bent on destroying it. And as long as there's an oppressive force threatening Hyrule, there will be a boy in a green tunic, silver shield, and magic blade to stand against it.